Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about the Magic Wand Tool. It's been given a bad rap, including from people like myself, but as I've got used to it over the years, I've got to like it a little bit more. It does have its drawbacks, but I still use it. Now the Magic Wand selects areas of common luminance or shared colour. It does this on a channel by channel basis, red, green and blue. In other words, it's an average of the three colour channels. Now the quick selection tool finds areas of luminance transition and paints up to those edges. So for colours, the quick selection tool is not as good as the magic wand. And that's why I use it, for instance, for selecting skies. Let's press W on the keyboard to go to it. Shift and W will cycle between the quick selection tool and the magic wand. Magic wand going now. Options bar. We don't have any tool presets and you're not likely to for the magic wand. It's on new selection because we have no selections. If we had a selection, we could add to it or subtract from it or intersect with it. Sample size three by three. I think it's on that by default. If you click down, you're sampling three pixel by three pixel area. Tolerance is normally on 32. That's a luminance level. So if I click down, I will select 32 luminance levels. Runs between 0 for black and 255 for white. So 256 luminance levels. Normally on 32, as I said. If you want to get to that box quickly, press return or enter. If I forget in this video, I apologize, but that's the quick way to get to it. Anti-aliasing works like this. Z or Z on my keyboard. And I'm just going to zoom in on this. Now this is on a type layer and type by default has got anti-aliasing turned on. So press the space bar, drag across. That is the anti-aliasing. It's even got it on the straight edge. The reason I say that is you definitely need it when you're going around a circle or describing an arc. Because we're on a pixel grid, square things are fine, but things with curves causes problems. So we put these transparent pixels on to make it look good on screen. Even though type is vector and resolution independent, you need this to make it look okay on screen. T on my keyboard for the type tool, click down. In the options bar, I can turn the anti-aliasing off to none. Look at it. And that's why we have anti-aliasing. So I'll put it back on sharp, get rid of that now. Command and control zero, F7 for the Layers panel, click on that layer there. So W for the magic wand, that's what anti aliasing is all about. It makes smooth edge transitions by sampling other colors near to the edge and other luminance levels. Unfortunately, it doesn't work too well, but it works a lot better than it used to. Contiguous means next door to or adjacent to. So if I untick it and click in the area there, I've also jumped that magenta bar. If I tick it back on, click down again, it won't jump that magenta bar. That's what it means. Command and Control D will always lose the selection. Sample all layers. Well, if you can see it and it's four layers down and you've got that ticked, you can still sample it. Simple as that. Select subject. This is newish. It's all about machine learning or artificial intelligence. If you've got, let's say, a human inside the picture, you can select it quite well. It does work quite well. It's not for this video. Select and mask works like this. Once you've got your selection, you can refine it here. It used to be called refine edge, now called select and mask. You need a selection, you know, use it. So once you've got it, you can refine it there. I do use it a lot, but it's not for this video because this would take another half an hour. Cancel. Right, let's see it in anger. I'm on it now. I'm on three by three average, 32 tolerance, anti-alias and contiguous. Click down here, I've gone out 32 luminance levels. 32 darker and 32 brighter. Not 16 each side, because it's 32. I've gone out 32 either side. Let's turn those markers off. So zoom in a bit there, that's what I've done. I've gone out 32 luminance levels darker and 32 brighter. If I press the return key, back to the, obviously, to the magic wand, press return. I'm going to change that to 64, press return. Click down again, because once you change that, you have to click down again. I've gone out 64 luminance levels brighter and 64 darker. That's how it works. Let's put the markers back down again. The problem being is, some people 
Now we go with the shift key to add to the selection or with the alter option key to take away from it and start clicking away without realizing it's still driven by that tolerance setting there. So if I press return and put it on 32, and all depends on where you sample as well. So if I sample over there with 32, shift key pressed to add, I'm only selecting that small area there. So command and control Z or Z to get rid of that. If I click nearby, and it has to be quite nearby, shift key pressed, I go out 32 luminous levels that way. Not that way, did you notice? So to do that way, shift key again, come in close, I have to go out on that side to get 32 luminous levels that side. So it is quite tricky. What I'm saying is always be aware of what torrents setting you're on. If you don't, you'll get angry. And I used to get really angry with it, but now I understand it, I don't get so angry. Let's show you the problem with it. Command and Control D to lose the selection there. Go to this type layer, and type layers by default uh, are anti-alias as we saw. Now I'm going to put the sample size on 101 by 101 and the tolerance on 255. The reason being is, as we now know, this has got semi-transparent pixels on its edge. I need to pick up those semi-transparent pixels. And to prove to you that I'm definitely going to pick them up, I've put it on a ridiculous setting here, 101 by 101 and 255. If I had it on zero, you could argue, well, at zero tolerance, you're not going to pick it up because zero will only pick up the black bits. And this is pure black, this text. So let's click down on it. Let's go to the channels panel and make this selection into an alpha mask. Turn it on, turn those off. Command and Control D to lose the selection. Z or Z on my keyboard. Zoom in, I'm on scrubby zoom. Notice that's ticked by the way. You can see it looks awful. So it doesn't work very well. Back to this RGB, turn that off, back to layers. Command and Control Zero to fit on screen. So that is the problem with this tool. It doesn't anti-alias very well. But we have W, select a mask to work with, so I find it okay for certain things, especially for selecting block areas of color. I know there are other tools up here, like color range, but I still use it. So let's go to a normal image, like this picture here. Command and Control Zero to fit back on screen to make sure it's on my screen. I'm on this layer here. It's a duplication. I've got between it a gradient map. It's just to show you what's going on when I eventually mask out this sky. Now I'm on the magic wand. I'm on 101 by 101. I want to be on 3x3 three three or 5x5 five five normally. Tolerance, press the return key. I'm going to put it lower than I would normally put it for this. Let's say 40 luminance levels. Press return. Command zero to fit back on screen. I'm going to click in the top part here with anti-alias ticked and contiguous on. If I don't have contiguous on, it's probably going to encroach into other areas. So I want it to stay with the sky. Now, I normally would have gone for 50 with this, but I want to show you something. Now, if I start clicking around with the shift key now, I know I'm going to get frustrated. So I'm going to show you something now. Press return or enter to get into that box. Put it on 10. And then I'm going to go to select grow and similar. Now grow and similar will make the selection larger by a tolerance setting you've got set here. It doesn't matter how you got this selection. Let's say you use the quick selection tool here and I've gone to it. If I went to select grow and similar to make the selection larger, it is still based on the magic wand tolerance setting. So always be aware of that. At 10, we select and grow, I'm going to grow 10 pixels more. The selection that is. Grow means adjacent to or contiguous. Similar means non-contiguous or not adjacent to. So I have a danger with similar to go into, let's say that water in the foreground or other areas. So I'm gonna use grow and it's done, it, it's done its work. I can use it again, select and grow. Select and grow. Now it's getting a bit boring now, so return, I'm gonna put it on 15. Select and grow. That is probably as far as I would go. Return or press enter. Now I'm gonna drop that tolerance down to about four. And then I'm going to use the shift key 
or the alter option key. Shift key going now to add to the selection. I'm going to probably um, not. I'm going to take that one away, actually. Alter option key, because that's part of the cloud. Then shift key pressed here. I should be zoomed in. Command Z on that. I'm going to drop the tolerance again down to two now, because I know it's not going to work. So click in, click in, click in. Try and get rid of that bit there, if I can get on it. It's done it. Click in there, click in there, click around there. A bit more for the flag. Click there, click there, click there. Done it. Click down. I'm on a very low tolerance setting, as you can see. Um, that's not that bad. There, there, there. I'm not going to get too fussy. There. That will do me. Now, normally, I would go select a mask, put it on something appropriate, like overlay, and refine this selection or mask. Cancel. We don't have time for that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a layer mask by clicking down here. Then I'm going to go to Properties with the Mask Panel. That's where it is now. Invert the mask, like so. So I'm seeing that gradient map. And then what I'm going to do is just feather the mask a little bit. This is a parametric change, and that means I can come back and adjust it. That's what parametric means in Photoshop. It has many meanings, that word, but in Photoshop, it means you can come back and change it, basically. So you can see I've done a pretty reasonable job there without even using Select and Mask. All you need to be aware of when you use this tool is that tolerance setting is right. So when you go to Select and Grow and Similar, and that could be available you know, for any selection, you need to be aware that it's based on the tolerance setting inside of the magic wand. So don't run this tool down too much. It's a good tool when used properly. I hope you got something from this, guys. Thanks very much.